Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Rechak Wadash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so and never to waking up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay, the title of this lesson is going to be His Pleasure. Okay, His Pleasure. And obviously the His is speaking of our Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, through His Son, uh, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay, and uh, what I want to go into, you know, is basically giving the core understanding, okay, of what this, this is all about, okay, what uh, life and the creation was all about, okay, and ultimately, put simply, it was all for our Heavenly Father's pleasure, okay, and then ironically, we were speaking about this at class uh, last Wednesday, uh, well, this Wednesday that just passed, and uh, the beloved brother, Samak Aparion, he taught class, and uh, basically went into, uh, went into the heathens, okay, and the strangers, you know, and, and understanding and deciphering between when it's speaking of Israelite strangers and uh, strangers uh, from other lands or heathens, uh, so to speak. OK, um, but, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, a conversation came up afterwards. Uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Bishop Lawyer, uh, myself and the, uh, the brother of war. We were talking and then basically came up, you know with this uh, understanding that, and we know that, you know, but, you know, just it came up in the conversation that these people, mainly our people, don't even believe in the Heavenly Father. They don't believe that the scriptures are real, okay? Even Christians, okay? They don't believe that uh, the, scripture, the scriptures are true and that really that the Heavenly Father exists, okay? Could be, because if they did, they wouldn't act as such, you see? And then the, um, the condemnation to that is that there are men that uh, have forsaken their lives and turned to Yahweh by Shemia Shai in all sincerity, okay, and, give, and have given their lives over to, okay, th th that faith and that belief in a higher power, you see? Like in the book of James, it said, you know, one may say he have faith, but I will show you my uh, faith by my works, you see? And that's exactly what the Heavenly Father has put the spirit on, on those of us who are walking in this thing sincerely to do. OK, put plainly. And, and, and that's why we say uh, uh, call halalim or all praises, you know, and glory be unto who? Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, why? Because all of the things that are taking place, OK, are ultimately for his pleasure, whether it be good or bad, you know, or, or it's and more importantly, as it pertains to us, uh, uh, him selecting us to be uh, that holy people unto himself. Okay, Deuteronomy uh, uh, 6 and 7, 7 and 6, you know, um, thou art a holy people unto, uh, unto me. Um, the Most High have made thee, you know, roughly paraphrasing. Matter of fact, let's get it. I'm butchering it too much. <laughs> Gotta get it. Gots to get it. This is Deuteronomy chapter, I believe it's 7 and 6. Yep, Deuteronomy 76, for thou art a holy people unto Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, thy power, Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, thy power have chosen thee be, uh, to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay. And one may read that and say, well, uh, why should this, you know, especially mainly I'm speaking about Israelites. Okay. The heathens, they have their own gods. Okay. And that's, uh, a common understanding when you read the scriptures, when you actually read them to understand, okay? All the other nations had their own gods, okay? There, there was no need for them to cling unto the God of the Israelites, okay? Do a word search on that and you see how many times it pops up, the God of Israel, okay? These other nations had their own God, 
you know. But an Israelite, okay, who or or, or you know, or someone who doesn't know that they're Israelite, okay, a Negro, Latino, or Native American, okay, you West Indians, um, uh, you Haitians, you know, uh, you know, so-called Latinos, those that don't know, they'll hear this scripture and be like, well, God is biased. He's a racist. And, and that's true. OK. And then the next question would be, well, why? Well, the scriptures say, hey, you know, it, it's, it's for his um, his pleasure. OK. How, how dare you <laughs> ask the creator? OK. Why this or why that? Like Jacob said all the time, don't question the most high. But you bring out the scriptures, then they'll question it. You know why? Because they do not believe it's inspired by our heavenly father through his son. They just don't. OK. And their actions show it. OK, so, yeah, what I want to go into is, is basically um, showing, you know, briefly how, you know, why the Heavenly Father has done what he's done. OK, and then as it pertains to uh, to the Israelites. OK, the water you have Shima how shy, man. OK, because it was his will. Everything is, is of his will. And when you can understand that, then you begin to understand the scriptures. OK, that's why the scriptures speak about the fear of the most high is the beginning of knowledge. OK, so you're called to fear an entity that you cannot see and that's not tangible that you can't touch, you see. And that's why the scriptures speak about the true worshipers and the true believers, you know, because you're not going to see uh, uh, angels come in your room and sit down and talk with you like they did with John the Revelator and all the other renowned men. OK, you're going to have to believe solely off faith, which ultimately is a gift given from the Heavenly Father. You see, all praises be to the Heavenly Father through his son. This is Revelation chapter four. Okay, and this is what this is going into worship of the Heavenly Father. Okay, but I think I want to start at uh, and we start at eight. Okay, Revelation four and eight. It says, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Uh, Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Okay, speaking of the Heavenly Father, you see, that's the type of worship He's worthy of. Okay, and especially how much more the Israelites, okay, people that the Heavenly Father has chosen and He clicked a group of people unto Himself. Okay, and ultimately, you know, if it hadn't been for the uh, the promises that were made to our forefathers, okay, and, and that grace and that mercy that the Heavenly Father has shown, we would have been in Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because our sins, uh, hey, like the scriptures say in Ezra, the ninth chapter, okay, uh, you have, um, um, how does it go? It say you have received less than what your iniquities require. Basically, the Lord has punished us less than we deserve. So he's worth his praise, man. Verse nine. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. Verse 10, the four and 20 elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, thou art worthy, O uh, Yahweh, to receive glory. It's like to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all all things and for thy pleasure you see for thy pleasure meaning his pleasure for thy pleasure they are and were created okay so that sums it all up why is it this way why is it that way okay why there are a plethora of different races of people why does the heavenly father want people separated from one from another okay why because read it again it says, for thou has created all things and for thy pleasure, they are and were created. OK, so the, the simplest answer is for the heavenly father's pleasure. OK, and that can't be a question. I mean, that can't be questioned or admonished or, or, or come up against. How are you going to have counsel with the heavenly father? It's impossible. OK, he's just going to judge your ass, man. And that's what he's coming back to do, because the majority of our people want to have counsel with the Heavenly Father. OK. Well, first and foremost, you're supposed to be praising him. OK. You wake up every day. The, the sun's up. OK. The birds chirping that's due on the grass. OK. You get rain. OK. You get You have a, a roof over your head. 
okay? Uh, uh, you're prospering, you know, or, or you're in poverty, you know? All of those things come from the Heavenly Father, you see? And they, hey, he's worthy of worship, okay? And he has created all things for his pleasure, you know? That's the basic core understanding of this thing, man. Uh, let's see. This is Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sirach, uh, chapter 42. Now we're going into the dichotomy. Uh, Yep, uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 42, verse 24. It says, all things are double one against another. And he have made nothing imperfect. Okay, so when you see a dichotomy of things, which e everything has a dichotomy. Okay, uh, the Heavenly Father has created one thing against another. You see why? Because it shows his perfection. Okay, and he says he have made nothing imperfect, meaning everything has to have a balance. Verse 25, it says, one thing establisheth the good of another and who shall be filled with beholding his glory. OK, and obviously when you go into the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, uh, the people that are going to behold his gl glory are the elect of the nation of Israel and then ultimately the whole nation of Israel. OK. With the point being, the most high created everything double, double one against another. OK, why? Because that creates balance. OK, and one thing is going to establish the good of another prime example, Esau's kingdom and his rulership opposed to when the Israelites are set on top and, 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 and rulership is given to our Lord, Yahweh Shai through and down to King David and the 12. OK, and 144,000 and so on and so forth. OK, like the scriptures say, the, the, the heathens are going to rejoice. They're going to they're going to rejoice. Why? Because the righteous is ruling. They're mourning now because the wicked is ruling. OK, but you see those two things are set one against another. OK, and people are going to look back. The heathens are going to look back and say, wow. Surely this this is a blessed people. OK, why? Because we're going to be living up under the law, statutes and commandments. OK, and, and everybody's going to rejoice. The scriptures say that the whole creation uh, uh, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of the most high. OK, which are the Israelites. Okay, to be brought back into their proper state for, for us to, Lord willing, with those men to have our bodies changed. Okay, and then to come down with the true government, okay, of the universe, not only the uh, uh, the world, the universe. You see. Speaking of Romans, let's get some meat out of there. So lucky. The book of Romans, chapter nine, and bear with me because I could read this whole chapter as far as it pertains to the lesson. But we'll go to nine and read down. This is Romans chapter nine. Uh, yeah, we we'll started now. This is our Romans chapter nine, verse nine. It says, For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Verse 10. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, verse 11, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the most high, you see, the purpose of the most high, who's going to have counsel with him? Okay. The scriptures say that he swore by himself because who he's going to swear to. <laughs> he is the almighty. He's the omnipotent. Okay. And people will say that you wacky tacky ass Christians, you'll say that, but you don't act like it. OK, if he's the only power, why are you uh, 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 going to a, a, a psychic? OK, then you got a lot of Jake getting into. Uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, uh, with the voodoo bees, you know, wearing them around their neck. A lot of Jake is getting into that, but they'll go to church every Sunday. OK, if God is the almighty, why are you needing other entities to help you? You see, it says, uh. Verse 11 again, for the children having not yet done neither uh, uh, Salakia, 
For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the most high, according to election, might stand not of works, but of him that calleth. OK, and who calls the heavenly father? OK, it wasn't by works. The heavenly father chose since the beginning of the time. The scriptures say he declared the end from the beginning. OK, why? Because he can. That's it. And if you can't accept that, this ain't for you. And then you're going to feel his wrath. You know. How do we know there is a power? How do we know of God? Through the Holy Scriptures. Okay? It ain't been by the word of mouth of man. Okay? Now, the Heavenly Father has set up prophets instead to do those things. Okay? But what solidified everything? The word. Okay? Which is our Lord Yahweh Shai. See, it all lines up. It says, uh, verse 12. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Verse 13. Okay? And the elder being who? Esau. And the younger being Jacob, you know, Esau came out first. Okay. But the Lord's already established it because our customs is that the younger brother is supposed to serve the elder. Okay. But the heavenly father set it up. Like, nah, nah, nah. The elder is going to serve the younger, which is ultimately a future prophecy. Okay. And it, it, it had taken place under the rulership of King David, you know, and then uh, during the dark ages, you know, but it's going to fully, fully, fully manifest when the kingdom is established, okay? Esau will be our servant, you know, for a thousand years and then he's going to be eradicated, okay? These are things that the Heavenly Father foresaw or really prophesied, okay? Had his men prophesy about why? Because he had already ordered it. He had already, hey, the ink had already dried, you know, before he created anything. Verse 13, it says, it is, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated, okay? And Jacob being the forefather of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and they that be of the speckled bird that are scattered abroad, whose lineage goes back to Israel, and Esau being the so-called or self-proclaimed white man. Okay, those are two different nations. And as the scriptures told her, there are two nations in her womb. Because why she she um she asked the heavenly father, if I have the child of the promise in my womb, why is it thus? Why is it I'm I'm catching so much hell in this pregnancy? And then the Lord expounded to her, Yeah, you got two nations in your womb. Okay. Uh uh, uh one one should be stronger than the other. And they're going to be separated, okay? They're going to be polar opposites. And when you look at the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which is the salt of the earth, and then you look at Esau Edom, which is the basis of men, you see exactly what the scriptures meant. You see? Verse 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Verse 14, what shall we say then? You see? Because the average person to read that, oh, I thought, I thought God didn't hate. Yeah, because you're not reading your Bible, Okay? But he does. He does hate. Right? You hate. <laughs> Jake is out of their goddamn mind, man. Okay? It's especially you heathens, you Edomites. You hate too. You hate niggas, man. You hate Israelites. Okay? You hate every anybody that's not you. You actually hate your own kind. So you're going to tell you the Heavenly Father can't? Okay? When he's the one that created that vibration or that emotion? Oh, boy. Verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? The Most High forbid. Verse 15. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And who's going to check him? Who's going who, who's gonna to check? Who's going to fight with the Most High? Who's going to counsel him and say, nah, that ain't right. You shouldn't do that. Now, people have done it. Okay. And if they're still alive, they're going to receive their judgment. You see, verse 16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that that runneth, but of the most high that showeth mercy, mercy. You see, so that's what it boils down to. And why? Because all of this is being done. All of the chaos and the hell that's taking place. All of this was for his pleasure. Just like a movie director. When he creates a movie. OK, you got the antagonist the protagonist you got the plot okay you got the introduction all of these things are the director's pleasure okay and it has to play out you know and that's exactly the the, the inspiration that directors get they get from the heavenly father from the scriptures you see and why is he doing it this way because he can and it's his pleasure verse 17 for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, 
Even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. You see, and what's more pleasurable than have your name declared throughout all the earth? You see, and that's exactly what he did to Pharaoh. He hardened his heart. OK, because he told him, hey, let my people go. Pharaoh said, nah, nah, mm -mm. nah, we ain't, we ain't doing that. OK, so he was bucking up against the heavenly father who actually created him, whether he was your God or not, which the, uh, the God of Israel was not the God of the Egyptians. They had a plethora of gods. OK, they were fornicating <laughs> or having sex with alligators. OK, we know how the heathens get down. OK, they had their own gods. So they took it as, oh, it's an insult. I have these people in total subjugation. And for you to come up and tell me that your God said, let them go. Hell no, I ain't letting them go. Okay, well, guess what? The heavenly father's going to harden your heart to do what? It says, I read it again. Verse 17, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up. So the heavenly father raised Pharaoh up, gave him riches, put him on the, on the upper echelon. Okay. One of the uh, wealthiest kingdoms to ever, uh, uh, be upon the face of the earth. It says that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. You see, verse 18. Therefore, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will, whom he will, he hardeneth. You see, so the heavenly father had mercy on Israel and he hardened who? Pharaoh's heart and ultimately destroyed him. You see. Verse 19, it says, Thou will say thee, uh, then unto me, why doth he yet uh, find fault? For who have resisted his will? Nay, but O man, who art thou that replies against the Most High? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? And that's what that's what's happening, which is absolutely as backwards and asinine for you. to. It's like the uh, potter, you know, creating a pot. And, and the pot, the, 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 you know, the actual vessel looking back at him and saying, why you why do you make me like this? And the answer is because I wanted to. And that's how ass backwards you people look. Well, why would the Lord do this? Well, because he can. It's his good pleasure. Right. So it says, um, I read it again. Verse 20. Nay, but oh, man, who art thou that replies against the most high? Shall the thing form say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? Verse 21. Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? You see? And that's exactly what has happened. Okay. That vessel that's unto honor is the, are the Israelites. Okay. And a vessel unto dishonor. Okay. Uh, uh, are basically... Is Esau Edom. Okay. He's the vessel that was made unto dishonor. Why? Because the Heavenly Father wanted to. It was his good pleasure to, to do that. Okay. Like a child with his toys. You know, he may have 500 toys, but he may play with three or four specific ones. Why? Because they're his favorites. He really doesn't care about the other ones. Okay. To the point where even if mom or dad takes them and put them in a the garbage bag and throw them shits in the garbage, he doesn't care. Why? Because he got his he has his favorites. You see, and that's what people are going to find out. You don't have to believe that now. OK, the elect will, you know, but people are going to find out how wrath is being poured, poured out. OK, and then how the elect are, be, uh, uh, are called up out of here, man. OK, the enemies are going to be behold them like the scriptures say. Yeah, that's it on that. We can keep going, but that's it on that, you know, for the sake of time. Uh, let's get one more and we'll close this thing on out. This is, uh, the book of Salakia. This is the book of Luke. Chapter 12. Yeah, I think we'll start at 29. Let me see. Luke 12 and 29, it says, and seek not ye what ye shall eat. Okay. And obviously this is, uh, our Lord and savior, uh, speaking to the men. 
Okay. It says, uh, verse 29, it says, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. Okay. Verse 30, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after, right? Because uh, like the scriptures say, uh, we're, we're better than the uh, the fowls of the air or, you know, not, uh, you know, the birds that they, they find food every day. They, ha they have refuge. Okay. And as the scriptures say, aren't we greater than those? You see? But why? Because we're God's eclectic group of people. But guess what? The nations get, get you know, um, get goods and, you know, get rain for their lands, you know, and able to uh, uh, possess crops and. You know, they, they, they're surviving as well. And wh where does that come from? The Heavenly Father, even though he's not, he, they don't re reverence him as their God. You see, it says, uh, verse 30, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Verse 31, but rather seek ye the kingdom of the most high. And all these things shall be added unto you. Okay. And a part of seeking the kingdom of the most high is obtaining what? Wisdom and knowledge. And what did King Solomon ask the heavenly father for? Wisdom and knowledge. And what did he receive? Everything. Okay. But even him, him he himself, he understood that that wasn't the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And all was vanity and vexation of spirit. But now, right now, we're in the last seconds of this thing, man. Okay. And we continue and hold on and endure to the end and continue to seek after wisdom, wisdom and seek after the kingdom of the most high. All things are going to be added unto us. Why? Because it's written in the scriptures. This is our Lord and Savior. How is y'all saying this, man? These are his words. Right? Verse 32. And here's the point. It says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You see? So a part of the heavenly father's pleasure, like the title of this lesson, his pleasure, a part of his pleasure is to give us, okay, the elect of the nation of Israel and then ultimately the whole nation. Okay. The kingdom of the most high, which entails eternal life, never getting sick again. Okay. Being merry and having an abundance forever. Okay. Never going off, never sinning again, never dying, traveling intergalactic. And the, and the list goes on and on. Every, what, hey, the scriptures say ears have not seen. I mean, eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. But the Most High has laid up for them that love him, man. You see? But the key thing, man, and the most comforting aspect of it is, it's his good pleasure to give these things to his children. You see? So that should be your mindset. You know, the Heavenly Father, our Father, Abba Nawa, okay? It would be extremely pleasurable for him to set us up in the kingdom of the Most High. Drop the mic. So, um, I believe I hit the point. The Lord willingness was edifying. So, with that, I say, Kwame Asharala and a Baba Ball.